Christmas cow. Is it the same as tequila? Doesn't make you trip. Why is there a worm in it? And what does it have to do with Frida Kahlo's eyebrows? One, yes and no. Two, no, that's mescal and silly. Three, because Mad Men. And four, you'll see. Also, there's only one superhero that has as cool an origin story as Mezcal. Hi, I'm Krista Curry, and this is a brief history of Mezcal. Subscribe to our channel and punch that bell button to stay in the loop with all things boozy. Now, let's do this. First, why is it called Mezcal? While the word tequila has a naughty, boob-related origin, Mezcal literally means oven-cooked agave. So, just like with brandy, which means burned wine, these guys didn't spend too long spitballing the name. Mezcal is made from the heart of the agave plant. There are more than 30 species of agave used to produce mezcal, the most popular being agave espadine, which is the source of 90% of mezcal. By the way, if you make mezcal from the blue agave and you do it in the state of Jalisco, you get tequila. Or, as the famous adage goes, all tequila is mezcal, but not all mezcal is tequila. The mescaleras traditionally roast the plant in fiery underground pits, crush it, and mix it with water. When the fermentation is complete, they move the stuff into copper pot stills where the small batch distillation process happens. 60% of the spirit is produced in the state of Oaxaca. That's also where Frida Kahlo's mom was born, so you have to thank Oaxaca for both mezcal and the most badass eyebrows in history. But who came up with mezcal in the first place? The origin story of Miss Cal puts to shame all superheroes, except the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, because that shit is rad. See, the agave plant used to be sacred in Mexico and was used in religious rituals. The myth says a lightning bolt struck an agave plant cooking and releasing the milky juice everyone called pulque. Pulque was considered to be the elixir of gods, and when the Spanish conquistadors came bothering the locals, they wanted a sip of that. The invaders were, however, used to harder stuff, and when they ran out of European liquor, they had to find something with enough ABV to give them a sufficient buzz. No one knows who, but one of these European imbibers decided to take this sacred plant and distill it. Aquí tienes! Mezcal! For a long time, mezcal remained a well-kept secret of Mexico, only made in small batches. While tequila was conquering the world, one margarita at a time, mezcal was mostly known as aguardiente, or firewater, sold in cantinas with a worm. We'll talk about worms later. Plus, tequila was named the national drink of Mexico in the 1970s, putting the final nail in all of mezcal's aspirations of becoming the head honcho. It's like saying Paul McCartney was the goat, but completely forgetting the Beatles. Not cool, Mexico. Well, give it to an industrious gringo to shoot something to the stratosphere. Meet Ron Cooper, an artist from Ojai, California. He stumbled upon Oaxaca and Mezcal when traveling and fell in love with both. He established Del Maguey in the 90s and started making fine artisanal Mezcal. He introduced the mythical spirit to the United States and the rest of the world. And people loved it. If there were around 360 distilleries in Oaxaca in 1892, there are over 2,000 today. And while a lot of people feel tequila tastes the same now, Mezcal offers a rich diversity of profiles, still sticking to small batch production. Mexico made over 5 million liters of Mezcal in 2018. Okay, but what about the worm? You know how cowboys used to down a shot of Mezcal to prove they were real hombres? What's up with that? Well, we actually covered this question in one of our previous videos, but here's the gist. It's all a marketing ploy from the 1940s that wanted to persuade people to switch from tequila to mezcal because the worm allegedly made it taste better. Except it's not a worm. It's a moth larva that allegedly lives in the agave plant and Hollywood lied to you. Also, please don't drown insects in your booze, girls. So how do you drink mezcal then? In the States, it's served neat in a small glass, while some serve it in the hollowed shell of a calabash fruit. Some people add a slice of orange and a salty mm -hmm. larva-based powder, but if you're trying a more premium mezcal with layers of flavors, maybe just skip all that. If you want something genuinely Mexican, make yourself an Oaxaca Old Fashioned that blends mezcal, tequila, agave nectar, and Angostura bitters. Senor Sinatra would've loved it. 
Perhaps you want to go completely bonkers and make yourself an El Camino, which demands a mix of mezcal, rye whiskey, benedictine, and bitters. I'm dizzy just thinking about it. Or add sweet vermouth, apple brandy, fernet bronca, and maraschino to your mezcal, because why the hell not? They call this bad boy all jacked up. That's it, ladies and gentlemen. You now know what mezcal is. Enjoy it responsibly, stay away from larvae, and don't forget to subscribe to our channel. Bye.